All right, friends, happy Saturday to you, Saturn Day. Aaron here bringing you your daily horoscope for the 23rd of November 2019. We've got the moon in the later degrees of Libra, all right? So it's going to be creating a square to Saturn, going to be creating a square to Pluto, all right? Now, Pluto and Saturn are in Capricorn. The moon is in Libra. That means our emotional needs, all right, our emotional needs are looking at both sides of the fence. We're standing in the middle and we see that the grass is green on both sides. And what do we do? You know, do we act? Do we not act? Do we move forward in this direction? Do we move forward in this direction? Do we, you know, fight for what we really want and love? Do we, do we consider the other individual? We're going to be considering a lot of both, okay? This is all about balance. It's the beauty of the cardinal sign of Libra. Now, Mars, is going to be creating that quintile to Saturn, and it's going to be opposing Uranus. So Mars is our planet of action, and in the sign of Scorpio, it's home. It's home in the sign of Scorpio, right? It's driven. It's driven by um, what is what's you know what is mine and my power and my strength and your power and your strength, and together we can create you know, kind of community, not quite like Aquarius, but this is about shared resources. You know, what I have, I've got some bananas and you've got some strawberries and that person over there, they know how to make sweet pancakes. And now we have strawberry banana pancakes, which is so much better than just me having my bananas, right? So it's just like, there's something that we can do with the group that is going to add, you know, there's strength in numbers, right? So now that Mars is going to be opposing for the next couple of days over to Uranus, the Great Awakener there in Taurus. So Mars home in Scorpio is cleaning out and doing the work, right? Cleaning stuff out. It's about deep rooted emotions that are down here in Scorpio, right? The shadow work that we've been dealing with for the past month. Uh, Venus was already through all of this stuff. Mercury was there and retrograde backward. The sun has already gone through. Now we got Scorpio just rearing his head in there. Okay, and Uranus, of course, and Taurus is saying, let go of some of these old traditions, these old pasts, these old things that we no longer need. There is a difference between healing and being healed, right? When you're healing, you might still be taking medicine, okay? I'm, I'm still dealing with the cough in my throat, so I'm still taking a little bit of NyQuil so I can sleep. Well, when that tickle in the throat is gone, we no longer need the NyQuil, right? So it's recognizing what no longer serves us when we are healed, what can we let go of, right? What things can we let go of? So this time, these next couple of days is really powerful for that transit for Mars. Let me show you the chart here to show you what's going on. So we also have, yeah, that Mars quintile to Saturn. Okay, this is creative energy. Okay, so there's a creative way that we can add more structure and discipline to ourselves to where we no longer need that thing. You know, whatever that is, you know, it's like if I, you know, I was taking NyQuil for the, the sore throat and to help me sleep. And then now I've, I'm now I'm, I no longer have the tickle in the throat, but now I'm, I'm relying on the NyQuil to help me sleep. Right. Well, this is saying like, no, friends, we don't need that anymore. We need to recognize our own strength, our own power here in Scorpio. Very, very powerful. Right. And this quintile is saying, look, Saturn, Saturnian words, strong, strength, stronger, uh, most, biggest, largest, right? This room is big, this room is bigger, this is the biggest. So when it comes to Saturn, you know, it's, it's adding that grandness uh, and the, the, the structure and discipline to our lives. So we're able to confront these shadow issues with a sense of authority. Okay, which is good because we are the ultimate authority and we are the ones that say like, no, I don't need the NyQuil, you know, <laughs> why am I using NyQuil? I, I don't know, whatever. It's what came in the head, right? And then the sun, of course, has joined Venus and Jupiter up here in Sagittarius. Venus is starting its conjunction with Jupiter. Very, very, very powerful. Okay, here on Saturday. And it's going to be even more powerful on Sunday when they come together, okay? It's a very, very powerful time of the year, but we'll talk more about that then. So the sun here in the early degrees of Sagittarius, okay? The journeyman, the, the centaur that's, that's, you know, there's no terrain that's stopping this horse person from getting to where they need to go. And we can follow um, this trine here 
to our personal healing, okay? That, that very personal aspect of healing where Chiron is there. Now, I know yesterday I was kind of jumping all over this chart, and I want to try to stay a little bit more focused today. Uh, so, you know, the sun is about expansion here in Sagittarius, expansion of our knowledge, uh, expansion of our personal faith, that whatever's going on in life, that yes, we are able to conquer this, we are able to do it. There is, uh, you know, this that, that fire in the distance that's worth seeking out. There's a book that's out there that's knowledge that I can absorb that's going to help bring perspective to my life that's going to help heal me All right so it's very important during this Sagittarius time Sagittarius season that we are trying to be like sponges and just trying to absorb as much as we can and be open-minded about it right which is the opposite sign of what Gemini Gemini is all the information the good the bad the ugly the right the wrong you know it's the the good news the real news the fake news whatever you know so we have like three, three different signs of really about information. You know, Gemini, all the information. Virgo, also ruled by Mercury, which is about very acute, very specific information. Then Sagittarius, although it's ruled by Jupiter and our planet of expansion, it's also a sign of information, right? So it has to do with the worldly knowledge that's out there. Again, that I have to seek. Um, there's all kinds of information that's out there in the world that can help us, you know, put the NyQuil down, that can help us let go of those crutches to let us um, excel and expand beyond the place where we're at to a, a deeper broadening of our understanding of we are healed and what we no longer need, what no longer serves us, right? So that's coming back to that Mars opposition, but, you know, it all plays in together. So this is a beautiful day to absorb knowledge like a sponge, <laughs> okay, to, to bury ourselves in, in, some, in some information, some books, but as well with the moon in Libra, this is still a sociable sign dealing with other people, okay, and now there's going to be a sextile creating between the moon and Venus, so our emotional need is the moon, and Venus is what we want emotionally and physically, right? So there's a really beautiful connection between what we need and what we want coming into focus today. And that air and the fire play off of each other. They, you know, they, they do that. They make that sound. And then further, the moon is going to create that sextile over to Jupiter. Okay, these are very creative energy, the, the, the two different elements coming together. So what we need is balance in our lives. That's what our emotional moon is saying. We need balance. And King Jupiter is saying, I'm going to give you more. I'm going to give you more information to learn how to create the balance within yourself. I'm going to give you more information to learn how to balance your friendships. More information so we can learn how to balance our partnerships. More information so we learn how to balance our work relationships or whatever is going on in our lives that deals with others. Okay, so it's a beautiful day of learning and absorbing more information. And being open to receiving that information is very, very important. You know, someone can give us a nugget of truth, and if we're closed off um, from receiving that truth, we're never going to allow our personal expansion. And that's what part of that Mars opposite Uranus is all about. You know, are we going to be closed off? Like, no, 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 this is how it's always been and always was, you know. It's interesting. You know, I, I love dealing, you know, I put out a couple videos about it, about, um, you know, astrotheology or cosmobiology, either one you want to talk about. But, you know, there's all kinds of interesting stuff when you start digging into religions and the origins of things. And I was like, when did the word God, when was the word God created? It wasn't until the 6th century. <laughs> it's a Germanic word. I just looked it up and it's like, are you... You know, it's just like, well, it hasn't always been this. Before that, it was a it was Yahweh who was the king of the Israelites. Um, not king of the Israelites, that's the wrong word. Um, uh, you know, leader, uh, the overseer. Either way, but that's where Yahweh, uh, uh, the tetra tetragametron, <laughs> I think I'm pro pronouncing that properly. It was either way. You know, it's just like, well, that's really interesting, you know, because you read one book and it says it always was the, the word God. You know, and then it's like, well, actually, it wasn't created until Germanic 6th century. So, it's information like that that can sometimes jar us, you know, and be like, well, wait, no, 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 that's improper, Aaron. You know, it's like, well, well, if we open up to receive or do our own research, which is the most important thing, what I'm telling you, don't take my word for it, look it up, right? 
So that's really, really important as we come into this day is are we open to truly receive the new information that aids to us healing? You know, and saying, look, look, you're healed. You, you can put down the crutches. You are healed. You can, you can actually stand. And it's like, uh, it's like that Ricky Bobby thing. Uh, if you guys have seen, uh, if you've seen um, Talladega Nights, you know, and he's, he's like, no, I'm paralyzed. And they're like, no, Ricky, you're not actually paralyzed. And the doctor's like, it's completely psychosomatic. It's in his head. And he thinks he's paralyzed. And it takes the guy stabbing a knife in his leg for him to jump up and realize, oh, I can't actually feel my legs. I can't actually stand on my own two feet. I can do this. So the goal here is to get there before somebody stabs us in the leg before the information becomes aggressive, before the information is pummeled, you know. Coming back to that old saying, you know, you get three chances. First time, spirit's going to tickle you with a feather to get your attention. Then they're going to tap you on the shoulder. Then they're going to hit your head with the brick. So we want to uh, be open to receive that tickle of the feather <laughs> and, uh, and then say, okay, I'm open. I'm going in this direction. I'm, I'm, I'm willing to learn something that might be different or contrary to my personal beliefs. I can stand on my own two feet. I can walk. I can put these things down. I can sleep without the NyQuil. <laughs> All right. Or whatever, you know, how that ever applies to you in your life. So as always, thank you. Have a very expansive Saturday and we'll see you tomorrow.